All right, so let's get everybody facing forward. If your body's not facing the screen, like you two, and you two, go ahead and turn your body around. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Is this better or worse? Better? That's better. Okay, so to prepare for this demo, the first thing that I did, as you can tell, I did not refine my lines. Um, I had left them all sketched, but I went ahead and erased all my lines and I have such a heavy hand when I'm drawing that I can still see them. But if you have a heavy hand also, or even a light hand, you really do want to erase the lines so that they're not shiny because we're going to be using um, a felt tip pen, which is a Sharpie pen. Um, and the graphite clogs the pores of the pen so that it ruins the pen. Does that make sense? So you don't want the, the graphite on your paper to be very large. Now, here's the deal with cross hatching, okay? I'm gonna try to explain to you guys how it works, all right? Um, let's say that I have um, that, that same rectangle that I wanna cross hatch, okay? And I decide that this is going to be the dark area and this is going to be the light area. Cross hatching works in a series of lines, okay, parallel lines. So one set of parallel lines here, you can see is not very dark, right? Two sets of parallel lines going a different direction will make it twice as dark. Another set a different direction will go even darker. Another direction, will go even darker. And the closer I put these sets of lines and the darker or the, the wider the line, I guess you can say, you can get a little bit of a variable with this if I push hard versus if I go fast. Does that make sense to everybody? So really, the first layer that you put down should be your lightest value. Does that make sense to everybody? So a lot of times when we shade, we start with the darkest areas because it takes the most layers. Does that make sense? Um, but we're also shading in that, that, that layer, we're shading the dark areas as well, okay? So when I'm doing this, when I'm not following me, let's say that I want to make it stop in an increment, I would stop at that increment. And then because this is flat, I want my stopping point to be flat also. Does that make sense to everybody? It's going to mirror the edge. So then I do another layer, but this time I won't go down quite as far. Again, a flat edge, flat edge, flat edge. I do another layer. I don't go down quite as far. It's still a flat edge. Okay, so now I'm creating gradients that are getting darker with each layer. Is that in focus? Okay, so at this point, what I really want to show you guys is let's say that we have a sphere, okay, and that sphere is casting a shadow here, and the light is over here, okay? Now, what's the biggest difference between this shape and this shape? It's really obvious. It's round. It's round, okay? So I could go about doing this two different ways. The first way is a little bit more advanced, I will tell you, is you could do parallel lines that are curved with the angle of the surface. Does that make sense? Those are curved edges. You could do all, all of them kind of round and curved to create value. That's a little bit more advanced. That will give the illusion that this ball is round. Does everybody see how that's doing that? The reason why we're talking about this is because our fingers are round. Okay, and we want to give the illusion that they're round. We don't want them to read as flat. Okay? The second way to do this, everybody pay close attention here, is instead of curving my actual lines, which is a little bit advanced, what I can do is I can end it 
with straightness in such a way that it creates the illusion of a curve. Do you see that illusion of a curve? I'm using straight lines still, but I'm stopping the lines at such a way that it creates a round value, okay? So I could do the same shadow with straight lines, but how I stop those lines is going to give the illusion of a round shadow. Is everybody feeling that right now? So what I want you guys to do for just a moment is go ahead and take the square and your Sharpie pen. And mine's a little bit on the dry side. Uh, as long as yours works, so it'll work, it's fine. Um, and go ahead and try doing cross hatching with good gradient. It's not just about getting lines, it's about getting lines that change. Sorry, values that change. getting the round lines. Try using flat lines that you stop and start so that it, it, the illusion is round. Yeah, go ahead and just do what I've done. And then you can even, the shadow below, you could do that, but that's on a flat surface because the table would be flat or else this ball would be rolling, right? So you could even, as that shadow is going to get darker the closer that it is to that ball. So you can really start to put in some gradient down below. Now that shadow under the ball would look better if I didn't have the outline. Do you see how the outline kind of looks bad around that shadow? It'd look a lot better if I just did the shadow, the, the cross hatching without the outline. about cross hatching is that you want to make sure that each layer is going a different direction but I mean think about it you could create all kinds of different angles there's like a bazillion different angles that you could go so you really can get a bunch of different hatches that are layered I'd also like you to try just, you don't have to do a rectangle like we did before, but try just doing a patch of cross hatching where you're creating gradient. Decide which area of that hatching is going to be the lightest and which area is going to be the darkest. And you can try doing it round, you can try doing it flat, but we're really just trying to get used to layering these different parallel lines, creating a gradient. Right, I'm gonna give you guys like another like 30 seconds to kind of finish this up. Are you guys feeling like you're almost done? Maybe I can give you a minute. Try to get some patches that gradate from dark to light. Oh, I did my dark and light on the, the rectangle wrong. I put the light where the dark is. Did anybody notice that? I did, but I didn't say anything. How polite of you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now with the balls, right now we don't have physical spheres in our presence, so we're using kind of 
our imagination of how light and shadow would work. But the cool thing is, is that you have your hand in front of you. So when we do start doing hands, you're going to be able to refer <coughs> to your hand. If you finish, go ahead and flip your paper over and draw a chubby finger. And by chubby, I mean a round finger. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just use your, your pen. Don't worry about it if you like make a mistake, like I just made a mistake. I'm not worried about it. might need more light for my finger. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. All right, can I get everybody to go ahead? I know you might not be done. That's all right. Um, go ahead and cap your pens and put those in the middle of the table pretty please. I want to see all pens capped. get everybody's uh, eyes right here. So what I like to do is I like to kind of blur my eyes when I'm observing because I just want to look for shadows. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing that my darkest shadow is right here and right here. It's kind of like this round area below. I'm also noticing that my mid-tones, like these dark ones kind of gradually turn into a mid-tone in this area. But also on the top edge here, I can see some of those mid-tone shadows. The shadows really stick to the outsides. Why does the shadow stick to the outside? It's silly. What? Silly. It's not silly. It's because your finger's round. And that light is only hitting the top bit. Everybody see my highlight here? That is the, gonna be the only area that remains the white of the paper. And even then, I, I don't really want the white of the paper, but just a little bit, okay? Now, if we look at the quality, I'm about to ruin my finger. Well, let's do it on my other hand. If you look here and you can see that like my highlight is right here, it kind of is like the chubby finger shape. Now, please don't do this because it actually ruins the, the, the markers. Uh, the oils in your finger clog up the, the marker. But I want you to notice that the, the quality of these shadows, I'm trying to do this left-handed here, are kind of round. Does that make sense? Okay, so as I start and I look at my finger and I'm observing where these heavy shadows are, I'm gonna start putting in these heavy shadows in kind of a roundish way so that it gives that optical illusion of roundness. Everybody see that? I'm not stressing. My next layer, I'm gonna do the same thing with the roundness, but it's not gonna go up quite as high because I wanna create a gradient. Okay, I'll keep going, going a slightly different direction. And I'm using my eyes in its darkest on the middle portion, on the bottom left of the middle portion. So in this area, I could even put in some, some little hatching here for some of these lines. And notice, did you remember how there was a line right here on this shape? You guys can see it down here. It's kind of disappeared because there's not enough contrast. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put another set of lines right on that edge so that it creates more contrast and I can see that lump of skin. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, the dark areas are the funnest and the easiest because it doesn't matter. You can go pretty dark 
okay? The other thing is, is what is the value of shading? What am I trying to dis disguise with, sh with value? What? I'm trying to make it look 3D, but what am I, what's the rule? What am I trying to get rid of? Outlines. Trying to get rid of all the outlines, okay? Now it's a lot harder to do that on the lighter surfaces because this is especially because it's pen, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm gonna have to be very careful and like I, I'm just gonna start a direction I feel would kinda be easy. I'm gonna try to stick at least inside of those areas. I can see some of these lines that I haven't drawn I'm gonna put in some shadows and ask myself, is the left side, the top side, or the bottom side of that line darker? Okay, so I can really start to put in those lighter values. Does everybody see how that's starting to look more three-dimensional there? Okay. So I'm just gonna very, very quickly show you what I'm gonna do on my hand. I'm gonna first start with outline everywhere. And I'm doing this rather quick. Take your time and do a good job. And I'm just, for the sake of the time on this demo, I'm gonna stop after this finger for now, okay? So I'm going to put my hand in place, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, oh, I need to zoom out just a little bit. Is that still in focus? Okay. I'm going to identify where are my shadows, where are my highlights. I can see more shadow there. So I'm just going to start popping it in. And I'm going to try to make it look round, as round as I can. Remember, this first value is going to be my lightest value. The lightest value is the one that goes the furthest. And I can see a line right here. And I'm noticing that the shadow is on the outside of that edge. It's kind of sticking to the bottom of that lump of muscle there. So notice how none of my lines are really perfect at this point. They're not going the same direction. I'm just blurring my eyes and I'm popping in some values, okay? Then I'm gonna try to disguise the edges. If I need contrast, I'm going to create value, so I'm missing that little fold there. And then behind there is actually darker. So as I do this, notice how right here it should be really, really, really dark inside of that area. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody kind of feeling this? Let me show you some examples. So here's an example here that's built up a little bit longer and you can really see that I'm using less of the white of the paper. If you have darker skin, you're gonna use a lot. And honestly, that's easier and more fun. Um, uh, the darker you can go with cross hatching because the lighter areas are definitely more difficult, I would say. How many of you guys totally understand what's up? All right, go ahead and give it a try. You have your little scrap piece of paper. You can practice your movements and your layers. Ready, set, go. Okay. 